Good day to all. Let us now start knowing about the basic tissues of the body. Junctional complexes. As we said that the lateral sides and the base of the cell, they have modifications which are called as junctional complexes. By these junctional complexes, the cells are tightly adherent to each other laterally and to the extracellular matrix at the base. And these are tightly adherent because of the presence of cell adhesion molecules which are responsible for these complexes and have contact with the link proteins that are present on the cell membrane. So these junctional complexes according to their function are classified as impermeable complex which is a tight junctional complex or it is also called as zonule occludens. Adhering complexes are the zonula adherence, the macula adherence, which are also called as desmosomes, and hemidesmosomes. These desmosomes are present on the lateral surface of the cell membrane. Hemidesmosomes are present on the base of the cell, anchoring to the connective tissue. All the other except the hemidesmosome all are present on the lateral surface of the cells only. And the communicating junctions are the gap junctions or connexons. So let us see each. The zonular occludens which is an impermeable junctional complex which is also called as tight junction. This is the cell. Okay. This is the basement membrane, lower which is the connective tissue. So this zonula occludens is present at the apical part of the cell. This network you are able to see. This is the zonula occludens where the cell fuses with the other cell obliterating the intercellular space completely. This is the enlarged view you can see. So this is the zonula occludens. This is one cell membrane. This is the other cell membrane. So this is normally the intercellular space. So this zonula occludens completely occludes the intercellular space. And this is present all around the cell. It forms a band encircling the cell binding to the adjacent cells. Okay. And this zonula occludens is present in skin, kidney, liver, gut, urinary bladder and other places where there should not be any seepage of the fluid from the lumen into the deeper structures. So this acts as a barrier preventing the passage of the materials from the intercellular space through the intercellular space from lumen of the viscous to the deeper structures. For example, let us take urinary bladder. So all the, the urine which is secreted from the cells okay, has few toxic substances like urea and all. We don't want them to again get reabsorbed back into the cells. So that's how this helps as a barrier where that urine doesn't penetrate into the deeper tissues. And then proteins which are present in the zonula occludens are clodulins are the main proteins which also has occludin 
and junctional adherent molecules which are mainly responsible for this tight closure of the intercellular space so what is the main function of this zonular occludens is it provides firm cellular adherence sealing the intercellular space preventing back diffusion of the transported substances so it is present at the apical part of the cell encircling whole of the cell connecting the cells surrounding that cell okay coming to the anchoring junctions so the zonular occludens what we have seen is a impermeable junction the anchoring junction has three types where which are attached to the adjacent cells and it is attached to the extracellular matrix the anchoring junctions are the zonular adherents okay and then the desmosomes and then the hemidesmosomes and there is another slight thing which is called as fascia adherents also we'll see to it so the zonular adherents the blue light blue structure what you are seeing is zonular adherents which is also called as adhesive belt or belt desmosome that is called as and it is defined as a cell junction whose cytoplasmic side is linked to the actin cytoskeleton this green structures what you are seeing the filaments they are all actin filaments this is a plaque okay on which the actin filaments are present so this will act as a link to the actin cytoskeleton which encircles whole of the cell just beneath the zonular occludens so the main protein here again is a cadherin so this cadherin links to the actin filaments here and this will oppose the membrane and is separated by a very slight gap the microfilaments which are embedded in the plaque are continuous with the terminal web this one they are continuous with the terminal web of the cell the cell membrane show a thickening this one deposited by proteins on its inner side this is the cytoplasmic side that is why it is seen as a raised structure this one the blue thing okay like a strip like a belt which is present on all the sides of the cell just below the zonular occludens and what are the functions of this zonular adherence it initiates and stabilizes the cell to cell adhesion it regulates the actin cytoskeleton regulating the actin cytoskeleton it also regulates the cell structure the stability of the cell is maintained and also intercellular signaling also is being done by these link proteins that is the cadherins which are present in the zonular adherents there is another one which is called as fascia adherents or adhesive strips they are similar to zonular adherents but they do not encircle the whole uh, cell in its circumference they are present as strips so the main example for them is the intercalated discs 
the cardiac muscles smooth muscle and the glial cells and the nerves the junction between the glial cells and the nerves these uh, zonula adhesion adherence are present and the fascia adherence is a characteristic feature of intercalated discs where the strips of these zonula adherence is present so they are just beneath the apical area of the cell below the zonula occludens so these are desmosomes which are also called as macula adherence or adhesion spots macula in latin it means a spot they provide strong anchorage between the cells so the stability of the rest of the cell is taken care by the desmosomes they are localized spot like adhesions scattered on the lateral surface below the zonula adherens and above the gap junctions they are one of the stronger cell to cell adhesion types and these are found in tissue where it experience intense mechanical stress like the one you see in the bladder tissue or the git that is the gastrointestinal tract mucosa or uh, the cardiac muscle tissue and the epithelia that is the skin as well and this provides stability to the epithelium and help to withstand the mechanical stress that is the main feature of this desmosome and the transmembrane linker this one the cadherin is present between the cells which are anchoring the desmosomal plaques on the cytoplasmic side of the cell or the inner surface of the cell which are called as desmoplakin these plaques are called as desmoplakin they are these circular plaques that are found on the lateral surface with intermediate filaments which are present on it which are the keratin filaments and these desmoplakins are interconnected by these link proteins which are called as cadherins the intermediate filaments are attached to the desmoplakin thus maintaining the cytoskeleton of the cell next is hemi desmosomes as the name implies they are half of the desmosomes so the desmosome means there is a plaque on this side of the cell there is another plaque on this side of the cell which constitute a desmosome whereas for the hemi desmosome there it is on the basal surface the hemi desmosome is the only junctional complex which is present on the basal layer of the cell all other junctional complexes are present on the lateral surface of the cell since it is present on the basal layer only on the one surface of the cell only the plaque is present so that is only one half of the plaque like the desmosome is present so it is called as hemi desmosome it is similar to half of the desmosome if you just take a strip of this this part is what we are reading it is the hemi desmosome these hemi desmosomes are present in cornea skin mucosa esophagus mucosa all over not just in the oral cavity everywhere the mucosa is there so the transmembrane protein proteins are between the cell and the basement membrane here and they are the integrins the proteins are the integrins which act as linker proteins if there is any damage 
to these integrins. So the cell is not anchored onto the basement membrane and the cell surface, the basal surface of the cell, it loses its anchorage onto the basal basement membrane and it can raise. So the blistering disorders are all linked to the integrates. So the adhesive property of the cell membrane is lost even in cancer cells. These integrins are lost. So that cell will get detached and then it traverses through the blood lymph and then it may get deposited onto the other uh, site. That's how it promotes for the spread of the carcinoma that is the cancer. So that is what is about hemidesmosome. So gap junctions, they are the communicating junctions. They are also called as nexus or macula communicants. Macula is, as we said, is a spot. This spot is communicating with the cell on the other side. So directly the cytoplasm of adjacent cells get connected, which allows various molecules, ions, electrical impulses to pass through a regulated gate between the cells which is this gap junction or which is called as connexons. The gap junctions occur almost in all tissues of the body with exception of adult fully developed skeletal muscle and mobile cell types such as sperm and erythrocytes. So this connexon, that is the nexus, is found on the lower half of the cell, the lateral surface of the cell. And this nexus consists of six connexon molecules that traverse through the intercellular space forming a tunnel between the adjacent cells creating a channel for the transportation. So opening and closing of these gap junctions can regulate the transport of calcium ions and maintain the pH. So these connexons, the six connexons, they can open and they can close accordingly under the influence of the cytoplasm or the pH of the cytoplasm, the cell. That's how the opening and closure of these connexons is maintained. And this maintains the cytoplasmic continuity between the cells in a sheet of epithelium which will form a phys physiological syncytium. What do you mean by syncytium? Syncytium means which doesn't have cell boundaries. But here there are these lateral cell walls. The boundary is present but there is a channel that will be maintained by these connexons from this cell to this cell from this cell to this cell, this cell to this cell, this cell to this cell. So that's how the impulse is transmitted between all the cells which will form a physiological syncytium. Though the membrane is present but the cells are all interconnected. And they are formed as we said by six transmembrane proteins which are called as connexins. And these are present for fast transmission of impulse. As they are the most common uh, junctional complex which is present almost in all cell types, functions of this are important. 
so the gap junctions may be seen to function at simplest level as direct cell to cell connected to transport the electric stimuli the small molecules the ions and everything and then they also are the key structures for the development of cell polarity that is left right or symmetry or asymmetry which is mainly concerned in developing embryos which is present in the primitive streak of the germ disk where if these uh, gap junctions are blocked the embryos fail to develop normally because right and left polarity if it is hampered then the most common thing that can happen is situs inversus which means that usually the heart is on the left side that may be on the right side the right lung will be on the left side the left lung will be on the right side liver will be on the left side the stomach will be on the right side that's how the polarity is hampered if these uh, gap junctions or the connexons are not functioning properly they also have a bystander effect on the adjacent cells for example a cell is injured or is infected because of this connection the adjacent cell also will get infected that's how the infection also spreads to the distant place another important thing is when it as it spreads the infection it also heals the wound and has a prime role in tissue development as the tissue means it's a group of cells is tissue right if the tissue is damaged because of the presence of these channels that tissue that group of cells will get healed also and another important thing is it acts as in the transport mechanism it transports few of the drugs also will be transported from the cell to cell for their action on that particular area for the therapeutic purpose so when these six connexons are closed there is no opening with the ph maintenance balancing there is opening and closing of the connexons that happen so for the summary of the junctional complexes this is one cell adjacent cell adjacent cell so these junctional complexes most of them are present on the lateral surface of the cell except for the hemidesmosomes which are present on the base of the cell anchoring to the basal lamina so from above downwards at the apex of the cell as a strip encircling the whole of the circumference of the cell is the tight junction seals the neighboring cells together to prevent leakage of molecules between them then comes the zonula adherence which is an adherence junction joins an actin bundle of one cell to the other leaving a very slight gap then comes the desmosome it joins the intermediate filaments which are anchored on to the desmoplakin in turn are interconnected by link proteins stabilizing the cytoskeleton and then are these gap junctions which permit through and through transport from one cell to the other maintaining the physiological syncytium of those cells hemidesmosomes it anchors the basal lamina or the connective tissue to the cell that is the basal surface of the cell this is the electron microscopic view of this is the villi this one these are the villi so this is the zonula occludens at the apex of the cell 
and this is the zonula adherence which is just below the zonula occludens which also encircles as a band we said as a belt and then this is macula densa that means the desmosomes this is just the lateral wall which i could uh, take a pic of so this is an electron microscopic view of the cell of the cell junctions coming to the applied aspect of these uh, junctional complexes because of the damage to the hemidesmosome function that is to the integrins we said that the link proteins of hemidesmosomes are integrins which are responsible for anchoring the basal surface of the cell to the basement membrane and the connective tissue lower down so when there is any mutations that happen with the type 7 collagen which is present in the integrins it will give rise to a rare genetic disease which is called as epidermolysis bullosa where because of the layer the basal layer of the cell gets detached from the dermis because of the damage to the integrins which are the link proteins which are anchoring the hemidesmosomes to the connective tissue which happen to have the type 7 collagen so the epithelium at this area gets raised from the basal structure this gets filled up with tissue fluid that will form as blisters all over so that is featured as a fragile blistering skin that baby has deformed limbs and various other comorbidities are also present wherever the epithelium gets detached it can get detached in the lung it can get detached in the blood vessel it can get detached in the cardiovascular system it can get detached in the urogenital system which can lead to an early death so this can be an autosomal recessive or a dominant disease and the babies are known as butterfly children because the skin is as fragile as wings of butterfly another most important thing is the pemphigus vulgaris which is mainly due to the damage to the desmosomes okay the catherins the proteins so it is a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction where the antibodies are formed against the desmosomes so this is intra epidermal that is the reason you find a larger area of stripping of the epidermis of the skin you can see the lower layer of cells are intact because hemidesmosomes is not a problem they are anchoring to the connective tissue down that is the dermis whereas the desmosomes are damaged so the lateral walls of the cells are all damaged so it is intra epidermal the blisters are larger area so it starts with the oral lesions where it is often mistook for an after sulcer that's where the differential diagnosis comes which you will learn in your successive years of mbps so that's how there are plenty number of uh, these ulcers that are found in the mouth in pemphigus vulgaris and this can affect 
all mucosa, skin, nose, pharynx, larynx, lungs, genital area, wherever the mucosa is, where the cells are having desmosomes. So naturally, all the cells have these uh, junctional complexes on the lateral wall of the cells. So all these areas are uh, damaged because of the formation of antibodies which are acting on the desmosomes against the desmosomes so what can be done is the antibodies has to be taken off where are they present in the plasma so the plasma has to be replaced just like dialysis which is called as plasma pheresis so this is the fourth most common cause of death due to the skin disorder so just to have an overview how what is this plasma pheresis so a blood from a donor is taken and it is put in a machine where the cells are separated and the plasma is separated okay and then the cells are injected back into the body and this plasma here gets filtered where the antibodies are filtered and the plasma without the antibodies are again injected into the person so in these persons the spleen also is removed which is called as splenectomy because it is where the antibodies are produced so even the spleen has to be removed for these patients so this is what is plasma pheresis it is called as plasma exchange which involves the removal treatment and return of the blood to the body to remove the antibodies thereby preventing them from attacking their targets this blood purification procedure is quite widely done in several autoimmune diseases which are due to these antibodies so where the blood cells and plasma separated and this plasma gets filtered and these antibodies which are present in the plasma are filtered and the filtered plasma is again transfused into the body that is what is plasma pheresis which is done to cure this pempigus vulgaris